Hello everyone, today I'm bringing you guys a quick video on the NZXT Kraken G12 GPU adapter for installing a water cooling solution on your graphics card. I personally own two of these, one for my 1080 Ti and the 1070 Ti featured in this video. I've been wanting to make a video on this product for a while now since I have seen a few others review it, but I felt that some important details were left out, such as mounting procedure and case installation. The Kraken G12 is compatible with 30 different liquid coolers and over 40 different GPUs as stated in the NZXT website. Costing around 30 US dollars, the Kraken G12 comes in two color variants, white and black. Here we will be looking at the black variant of the two. I will be pairing this up with a Corsair H55 liquid cooler which is made by the company Azitech and which makes many of the different liquid coolers out there for brands such as Corsair, NZXT, Antic, Intel, and a few others. So let's go ahead and get started and see if something like this is worth your while to cool your GPU. Alright, so let's go ahead and get the Kraken G12 out of the box. And the first thing that greets you is the instructions manual. Uh, I can tell you that this is very well laid out. Uh, for me, as far as I can tell, it's very, um, uh, it's pretty much foolproof. Uh, even a novice can get this thing installed with a little bit of patience, just following the instructions here. Included, you have a 92 millimeter fan with a three pin connector. This thing is pretty quiet, even at max RPM. Here you have all your uh, screws and other brackets that you will need for installing the Kraken G12. And here at the bottom is the adapter itself. One of the other things that I appreciate about the Kraken G12 is the matte black color to the plate itself. This is something that won't be standing out or you know sticking out like a sore thumb in your system. It'll blend right in there with the, the rest of your components to keep that nice uh, black theme going uh, in your system if that's something that you're aiming for. And here is the uh, GTX 1070 Ti. I love this card. I've had it for a while. It is fast. It is nice looking. Um, the only thing I have against it is uh, that blower style cooler. Uh, although I knew what I was getting, uh, you know, when I bought it, uh, because I had plans to uh, water cooling it, uh, just for kicks, just for about a month or two, I, I had it in my system. It would re easily, easily reach 83 Celsius under uh, a normal load playing GTA for, you know, for let's say about 30 minutes. So, um, but but that's that's something that comes with uh, any blower style cooler. You know, you're not going to get the best cooling out of it. Uh, but again, these cars are designed to run this hot, so, you know, uh, still, uh, I, want, I wanted to get those temperatures down because of thermal throttling. I know there's more uh, power in these things that you can squeeze out of it uh, if you can only manage to keep those tem temperatures down. Um, and that's what we're here to find out today. If, um, if we can get to keep those temperatures down, if we can stop the thermal throttling from uh, throttling from occurring, and and if we can uh, get you know a little bit more overclocking out of it, and get more uh, stable frames per second. One thing that I want to point out is that uh, it helps to just go ahead and put the the little screws that you took off the back of the car there to remove the uh, the blower style cooler. Just go ahead and put those screws right back into the blower, uh, so that you know you keep them safe and you're not missing any of them in case in the future you want to restore the car to its retail state for whatever reason so just keep that in mind to remove the old thermal paste guys i would advise you not to use uh toilet paper or any type of tissue that has that you know leaves uh, lint behind i didn't have any coffee filters at hand at the, at the moment so i just use regular paper towels from the kitchen uh, but i did make sure to you know blow away any visible lint on the on the dye itself these are the brackets that you will need for installing the Kraken G12 to your graphics card. This one here is labeled A for AMD. Uh, the NVIDIA card uh, brackets will be labeled with the letter N, obviously for NVIDIA. So it'll make it easier for you to uh, know which brackets you need to use. Uh, 
Another thing that I want to point out, guys, is that you get a total of eight washers. Four washers for the back screws and four washers for the front screws that go on the mounting plate. Uh, make sure you use those. What I like to do here is run a screw through with the washer already installed, put the bracket over it on the other side, uh, drive the screw in just a little bit so that it holds the bracket and then you get started with the second screw at the bottom. Remember, you don't need to over tighten these screws here. Just, you know, make sure that they're in there secure and that the the, the bracket itself is not going to come loose uh, in time or when you whenever you put the plate on it. Um, you know, just give it a, you know, be a little uh, conservative on how much torque you give those screws. You don't want to damage your card. All right, so here you have it, the uh, brackets are in place. Now we're just ready for the mounting plate. One thing that I wanna point out here is that uh, the fan that you're gonna you're about to see out of the box here is not the fan, the retail fan that you get with the H55. This is just a fan that I purchased separately. Uh, this is one of the Corsair static pressure fans. So I'm gonna be using that, this fan here, with this uh, little project. Another thing is that I love how uh, clean the hoses look on this little cooler, how, how uh, nice and low profile the pump um, uh, looks as well uh, on the uh, Kraken G12. Uh, it performs very nicely. Uh, I have no complaints uh, with, the perform with the performance of this little cooler, so um, overall very happy with it. Alright guys, so let's go ahead and uh, get the the plate installed onto the graphics card. Uh, one thing that I want to mention is that I will not be using the fan that was included with the package here with the uh, Kraken 212. I actually purchased a separate, uh, different uh, 92 millimeter fan. This one is a four pin PWM fan from Noxua. This is the Redux uh, uh, model. Um, I've used this, this type of fans before. They're quiet uh, and they push uh, you know, a lot of air. So. Um, I like the re reliability of the brand as well. Noxua is well known for quality fans, so I want to go ahead and stick with this. Not that there's anything wrong with the NZ NZXT fan, I just prefer to go with this brand here. One thing to keep in mind when you're installing this fan is that you want the uh, the fan to be pointing the right direction. Uh, here, as you can see, that that's the wrong direction. You don't want to install it that way. Uh, this is the right direction here. I corrected myself before I actually uh, put the screws in uh, because uh, you got to remember that you want the air to be uh, going uh, towards the VRMs, you know, pushing up towards the VRMs of your car to make sure that all that stuff uh, stays nice and cool in there. Another thing that I want to point out, guys, is that this little fan here does a great job of keeping your VRMs cool. Uh, remember that VRMs are rated uh, up to 125 uh, degrees Celsius or 130 degrees Celsius, so you know that's you don't you don't need to worry about uh, uh, hitting overheating issues there. Uh, in fact, with this little fan here, my VRMs actually ran a five degrees cooler. 
uh, compared to the to the stock cooler that came with the card. Also included, uh, you have these uh, rubber rubber standoffs here to to prevent any type of vibration or you know so that the, the the plate itself doesn't come in contact with any of the components on the car not that they will because you have plenty of clearance there but it's good to have them there it's good to install them so don't leave those out what i like to do is i like to set them uh with the sticky part up facing towards up the plate uh, and just set them down on the card uh, and then place the plate on top so and then add a little bit of pressure pull the plate back off and as you see there in the video the the the, the rubber standoffs stick to the plate and the uh, and the place on the PCB where you want them to be. Now for many years I have uh, used MX4 for this type of uh, projects. Uh, this time for the first time I'm, I'm going to try something new. I'm going to try it, uh, Pro the Prolimitech PK3 uh, thermal paste. I've heard a lot of good things about this thermal paste. It's something new to me personally. Um, so I may I may make a video uh, just about this, uh, this subject here coming up in the future and I'll let you guys know what I think and uh, you know the results how this compares with maybe MX4 or uh, Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut so stay tuned for that and with when it comes to graphics cars uh, another thing is that I like to spread a thermal paste I know that you can get away with just uh, you know doing the P method but uh, I don't like to take uh, any chances here I want to make sure that every single uh, corner of the the GPU die is covered uh, and it has a, a, a good layer of thermal paste so that I have that peace of mind knowing that everything will spread uh, correctly and that uh, I do have that good contact between the uh, my cooling solution and the die itself. Alright, so let's go ahead and get the uh, plate and cooler installed. Here you want to take your time guys, don't, don't rush this process here. Um, uh, what I like to do here is uh, look, get a good angle from the top, make sure that I line up all the holes with the holes on the bracket itself, um, so I know where you know everything's laid out. Um, and then I um, I pick up the uh, the plate here. I uh, I pass the uh, the cooler through the, the the gaps there that you see on the plate. I pass it through. I twist, and then I. I bring the cooler back up, back up, and I lock it into place. And then I slowly let the uh, uh, the plate uh, with the cooler down onto the card. Uh, always keeping an eye on those holes there to make sure that everything is lined up correctly. Now you may be wondering why I have the hoses, uh, why I have the cooler, you know, in, in that layout like that with the hoses up. Um, when I install this on the case, you will you will see why I did that. Why the logo is not, you know, facing. Uh, uh, the length of the card uh, it'll make sense once you see it installed because the the radiator is going to be installed on the back of the case as an exhaust service as an exhaust um, instead of uh, an intake and it'll it, it just makes things easier uh, when you have the hoses uh, the way I install them like that and this is uh, one of the screws that you're going to be needing for installing the uh, the, the plate with the cooler onto the card uh, make sure that again uh, I want to remind you guys you got to use make sure you use those washers because uh, the here at this step here is crucial also you don't need to over tighten these screws here just go ahead and finger tighten them that's all the torque they need uh, that's just enough to keep that uh, the cooler on the die itself and there it is that's it the uh, Kraken G12 is now installed uh, it's ready to go all we got to do now is just slap it into the case and uh, turn it on and see all this uh, cooling bliss and of course we can't forget the fan on the radiator uh, we probably will need that so yeah, let's go ahead and get that installed. Yeah, 
In here I have to apologize guys for the lighting. This is kind of a horrible uh, lighting, I know. Uh, I set the case by the window and thought that it would look better than I actually did. So, uh, But anyway, um, hope you guys get a good angle there. Hope you guys are able to see what I'm doing. So yeah, yes, we're just installing the card and uh, making sure that everything's secured. Um, Hey, let's go ahead and uh, we're also getting the uh, radiator installed uh, in the back of the car now you see why I installed the hoses the way I did because um, I wanted to get enough slack so that the radiator will have enough uh, hose length to be able to reach to the back of the case the way I did there and also uh, to make the to, to move the hoses out of the way so that not sticking upright hitting the side panel of my case and there you have it uh, the Kraken G12 is installed uh, got it running and uh, yeah let's go ahead and take a look at some uh, some numbers here running the valley benchmark in about five minutes I would be at 83 degrees Celsius with the stock cooler now with the Kraken G12 I cannot get it to go past uh, 53 54 Celsius uh, it actually stabilizes around 53 degrees Celsius these are not bad temperatures considering I only have the pump running at 80%. The biggest improvement that I saw was uh, during gaming. Um, the, the greatest hit that I took with the uh, previous cooler uh, was on my minimum frames per second. While running GTA 5 4K uh, would at times, depending on the areas of the map, especially where there was a lot of uh, you know the grassy areas, I would hit minimum 30 frames per second. Uh, with the new cooling solution, minimum 54, uh, maxing at 98, and average of 81. Big improvement just by installing this uh, uh, water cooling solution with the Kraken G12. The culprit for the uh, low frames per second uh, was uh, thermal throttling, and that is no longer an issue with this cooler here. So, uh, great improvement over the uh, stock cooler that came with the card. And, uh, well, that's all I got for now, guys. I hope this is helpful for someone out there uh, looking to find a, a cooling solution for that hot running graphics card or for running a, 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 a cooler system or a quieter system. Uh, this is a great product, and I highly recommend it. I hope you guys enjoy the video. Hit like, subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next one. Take care. Bye.